Hey, I'm Ron. Hi, Rachel. We are doing our introduction video, and the plan is to um, go from when we met to about where we are right now. Hopefully in about an hour is what I'm thinking. It might go a little bit longer depending on uh, the issues we talk about. But um, So I come from a uh, military background. My father was in the military. Um, I had a stepmother growing up that I wasn't very fond of. Um, and when I was, I think I moved away from home when I was 16, I had married someone else, um, weird circumstances. That person left me when I was, uh, a couple months pregnant and I met Ron and, uh, he actually adopted my first son and his name is Ron also. Um. He was active duty military at the time, and we were at uh, Fort Hood, Texas. Um, our relationship started out, I guess, like any other young couple. Um, we struggled financially, especially being a military family. Um, I was 18 with an infant, and by the time I was 19, we had a second son. And um, the military lifestyle was on its way to be um, quite crazy and chaotic, actually. Um, I could, you know, I could add them. And for a while, real quick, by the time we met also, I had just come back from my first duty station uh, after training. It was in Korea. And being an 18-year-old in Korea, fresh out of basic, at that time, I was allowed to purchase alcohol. So... I started off, I started right off the bat falling down the alcoholism trap. And by the time we met, which was shortly after I returned, months after I returned from Korea, I was already a full-blown alcoholic, just to put that right there. So that led to financial problems and other problems along the way because of, you know, I, I wasn't ready. She was, it was like, okay, you go ahead. Yeah. I, yeah, the alcohol definitely was an issue. It, uh. I, Beach. yeah, Beach. Beach. <laughs> even the first night we met and, I, uh, he was intoxicated. Um, I was kind of freaked out by it, but, um, he was so quiet and mysterious. Um, I, I guess I just couldn't get enough. It, it was, it was pretty awesome to have this kind of scary, quiet dude that would protect me from anything, um. He, he was quite aggressive when he wanted to um, tell somebody to leave me alone for one thing or um, somebody did something or said something wrong to me. He was very protective and um, as a young, a young girl, actually, I was not a woman, but as a young girl, it was, um, I was fascinated by it and um, extremely attracted to that. I wanted someone to guard me and protect me. Uh, in, in that protective, not possessive. Yeah. I didn't have that trait or that issue of being possessive of her. So I wouldn't want it, the wrong image to be put in the mind of that I was an alcoholic, possessive, Oh, yeah, he wasn't jealous it or wasn't anything like that. Like that. But it I was, was just protective of her because I did love her. Filling a void in my heart. It's a, okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I just want to make sure that you know. Yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. yeah. Um, yeah, he was never jealous or bossy or um, a lot of people, especially in the military when I was young, a lot of women were married to men, it seemed, that would um, run their household the same way that uh, they behaved at work in the military. And they would check their kids' rooms with white gloves and um, the children weren't allowed to do anything. The wife had to stay home. She had to cook. She had to... I. I never had anyone, he never bossed me around or told me I couldn't do something. Um, I'm definitely not that kind of person anyway. I'm, you tell me I can't, I'm, even now, I'm, I'm going to prove you wrong that I can do it. So, it's just my personality, I suppose. I don't like to be told um, by anyone what I can and can't do. It's just who I am. So, uh, that, that never played a role. I, on the other hand, was... Um, very jealous and possessive and he's mine and don't look at him 
Wow, all you women that are out there that think everybody wants your man, I don't think they want him. Um, I was definitely, I acted like a butthole for a long time. Um, we stayed at Fort Hood for well, a few years together. Um, Ron decided that he was going to actually get out of the military and try to become a police officer in Michigan where he had grown up and he had I think you took a test online or you actually came home on leave and and did it and then had an actual interview so he decided that he was going to get out um, that was a pretty stressful time um, he did actually get out we came all the way to Michigan and because of um, equality even though he was um, the highest qualified applicant um, they didn't have enough um, others so the others got hired that, that's the only way I'm gonna put that it was the equality thing and he didn't get that job which I think um, caused a little bit of um, maybe depression in me anxiety uh, scared for what we were gonna do I thought he had a plan and uh, that didn't work out for us so he ended up working at a factory uh, for the short time that he was out Still drinking heavily, working third shift. I didn't see him much, and we were in Michigan, and we came from Texas to Michigan, and there was snow everywhere, and I hated it. Um, it his mom and I kind of clashed a little bit. We lived um, with them for a short time, and then we rented a house right behind them. Uh, She's a little antisocial because of things she's dealt with in her life, and I wanted a mommy. And, of course, <laughs> his poor mom was like, you're a little overbearing. <laughs> I wanted her to be my mom, and she just wanted me to leave her alone a little bit. Um, but we've we've definitely worked through our things. I've always loved her. Um, we, we all have our own little quirks that make us kind of get on each other's nerves, but... Um, She's an amazing person, and she was an amazing mother to my husband, regardless of what he did on his own. Um, it, it definitely was of no fault of hers. Um, I agree. Well, we ended up having to get back in issues like uh, uh, my son, Damien, got sick at one point, and we had to take him to the doctor to get he had an ear infection or something, and I think the antibiotics were $75 they were charging us because my son had an ear infection that was really stressful because coming from the military lifestyle yay free medical care housing all those things so at that point we didn't know about uh, things that we should have known about as parents but um, like nothing. <laughs> we didn't know so I tried to convince Ron and I did oh don't you miss the military don't you miss um, Drinking with your buddies. Don't you miss um, having barbecues on the weekends and everything that would appeal to him um, about the military and the, the having friends over and all this kind of thing. And really, I was scared because I missed going to the commissary and having a house full of groceries. And I miss being able to get uh, Christmas gifts. <laughs> That's a joke now, but Christmas gifts for the children and um, and free hospital visits, not stressing out whether or not we could pay for the medication for one of our children. Um, that was that was a big issue for me because they were very young. Um, and so he did get back in. He only stayed out eight months, which they didn't take any time away from time and service for that. And just so, yeah, on this point, it wasn't her that talked me into it because during this whole time when the police officer thing was another childhood fantasy of mine. The soldier <laughs> and the police officer thing. Those were images I had in my head since I was, since I could remember back best I can sift through. So when the police officer thing didn't work, it wasn't really that she talked me back into it because I was already just, I was on the verge of going back anyway because it kept just playing through my mind, my fractured mind, because I truly at that time loved what I did in the army. When I got out, I was getting out to go do like another, you know, childhood fantasy dream job type of thing or profession and see how that was. 
But yeah, when that fell through, I was going to end up going back anyway. I, I know it, unless I would have healed then, which I didn't. So, and I truly loved what I did. I was all about it. And I was all about per being a protector, protect the country and all these things. So yeah, it's not like she, she snaked me into going back in, you know, or talked me into it, something I didn't want to do. Just to be clear on that. So, yeah, that was my goal though when I was bringing those things up. I I knew he kind of wanted to anyway. But um, so the the adventure began with um, going back in and goodness gracious that trip down to Georgia from Michigan. Um, lots of signs there that told us no turn around and go back. We just didn't pay any attention to them. Devil um, went down to Georgia. Yeah. Maybe the devil was waiting in Georgia. I don't know, but it was like it. it was crazy. Um, uh, so we went back. We got stationed at Fort Stewart. Actually ended up stuck. A lot of people like to call it Fort Stuck because you get stuck there for a long period of time. We were actually there for 10 years. And I have to say it was probably the 10 worst years of my life. Um, besides the fact that I had two beautiful boys. Um uh, to try and raise, even though I wasn't even really an adult myself. And then, um, fully unaware that I was about to embark on something crazy, which was also, um, pretty much being a single parent because, um, not long after we got to Fort Stewart, um, Ron still was drinking heavily very happy to be back in the military, doing very well, actually, um, with his career. Um, people admired him, looked up to him, and, and that was awesome. Home life was not so great. He drank uh, way too much. I had two small children, and they were a handful. Um, my children were vaccinated, and um, I didn't quite realize that all the problems I had um, as a parent were because my children were damaged by vaccines and I did not know it. Um, so they were very hyperactive. They had constant earaches. They had constant, um, we, I went to the doctor every time the military, the doctor's free. So every time a child had a fever, I rushed right to the ER, no matter what was happening. They were coughing too much. They said their stomach hurt. Um, they stubbed their toe. Literally I took them to the hospital for everything because we were in the military. It's free. Didn't know that we were guinea pigs either, but um, more chemicals later. Yeah, um, my children have probably had just about every medication you can think of, every antibiotic, every single um, unnatural thing. Yeah, like, everything. They, yeah. They, we've all been on so many different medications at one time for a number of ailments. Some medications to counteract side effects from the first medications. It's just. Oh, let's try this. This is a new drug out. Let's just try it. I think the military families get to the the crap end of it because everything gets tried out on us and um, it causes a lot of negative health effects. We have since figured out. And the damage has since been well out to everyone else and that's what everyone seems to... I, I don't like using those terms, but that's what's going on right now. You have brokenness yeah. on that kind of scale. So... Yeah. If anyone gets offended, I apologize, but I do know that I know military um, families, spouses, and, and um, their children who have had severe issues also from things that the military hospitals have given them. They just haven't realized it yet that um, it's been caused. So for me too, apologies, yeah. but really the truth it's of the this truth. is and offensive, we have to and say it really it. is yeah. offensive once you see and know that, that what's being yeah. said is the truth. So yeah, it's not to cause hurt feelings or hurt emotions or yes. offense, so, but the truth really is offensive of of what's been done to everyone. Where I grew I up, mean, where I think most of us grew up, so sorry to take it up. Oh yeah, that's okay. So the children were, uh, the medicines. And the yeah, medicine. young and medication. My children were very hyper. Um, I didn't get much sleep. Um, I lived with an alcoholic and I uh, I didn't sleep much. I, I cleaned at night and, um, had my own peace of mind because if I didn't stay up at night, I didn't ever have any, uh, mental clarity for myself. Um, the boys were very hyper and, um, and then when he would come home from work, it, I, I always made dinner. Um, 
we had really good meals. I, <laughs> for what I thought were meals back then, but I, I made dinner every night. I baked for my children. Um, I tried to do things the best that I knew how. Um, I didn't realize that I was feeding them a bunch of sugar either. I, I thought, oh, I'm buying my kids yogurt. It's healthy. Um, fruits and that. I picked up a Trix yogurt one time and um, realized that this tiny little cup of yogurt had 32 grams of sugar in it. And I was like, well, okay. Um, they're acting crazy because I'm giving them sugar. Um, so I started switching to things that said sugar-free, which is aspartame. Um, which causes ADHD-like symptoms. I did not know this back then. So we spent um, a long time buying things with aspartame in them and feeding them to my children because I thought, oh, they don't need that sugar. It's not good for them. That's just part of um, things that we've learned. But I really was, as a parent, trying to do the right thing and not have uh, my children put on pharmaceuticals. Um, it, it just wasn't something I agreed with. Um, Shortly after moving back to Fort Stewart, I want to say a year and a half or two years, 9-11 um, happened. Um, I could go through the whole day. I remember every single thing about it, being on a military base. I rushed right off post to um, as soon as the first plane hit and there was something going on. I just had a feeling for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> but, but as Electric soon as there was a building on fire, um, uh, I decided right then for some reason, I knew that I needed to get off post and pick up my oldest son from preschool. Um, I just had a weird feeling and I did that. I went right off base, picked up my son and came back on base. And by that time, the TVs were going crazy and um, the military wives were calling um, oh my God, they're going to war. And I just kept saying, honey, it's going to be okay. They got to come get their stuff first. You know, like they got to come get their stuff before anybody goes anywhere. So, um, just kind of sat around that chain, that day definitely changed a dynamic, um, for, I have to say every military family, every soldier that was, um, in the system at that time, so um, life, life changed completely. Um, the soldiers ended up even having to get way more vaccines than they did before. Uh, new deployments. Uh, all kinds of things. Families completely separated. Uh, I don't even know how to describe that feeling of being married to someone who's an alcoholic and kind of annoying. And this person's very excited. Yay, we're going to go kick some butt. And your children are scared their dad's going to die. Um... We have we have little cards that my boys wrote to him and they drew pictures of him shooting bad guys and Telling daddy, please don't die over there. Um, those kinds of things are awful um, It's awful that we ever even had to talk to our children about things like that because well, they just shouldn't go on in the first place, but um, The first deployment um, and I believe they started giving the soldiers different um, medications uh, to prepare them for deployment. Take this pill, take that pill, take this vaccine, this flu mist up your nose, all these things that they do to them um, while they're transitioning, coming home from a deployment or going to one. Those things caused um, a mental disruption um, in my spouse. It was almost like right before every deployment he would change. And it was after the so-called, what is that thing called where you're getting ready and you have to go and sign all the papers and get your shots and... SRP. Okay, it's where they go get ready. That's all I knew about it. But Big packet of information, all updated, all shots updated, all mm -hmm. legal crap updated, this, this whole thing. Getting them ready, making sure their teeth are taken care of and they're deployable still or not non-deployable because they got a cavity. Go get it filled right now so you can go fight some bad guys well um when he would get these shots and take these pills and get ready it was almost like he was putting himself in this mental weirdness and so you add alcohol on top of this mental weirdness that he had and it was the darkest thing i'd ever seen in my life and it was scary um 
he would sit sometimes in the dark and uh, talk about how he um, didn't want to be there. And I was young and I kind of would get fed up at times and be like, what the hell's wrong with you? Um, don't you love your kids? Don't you love us? What's wrong with you? And he would just be like, I just don't care about anything. And he'd be sitting in the dark and he would sit alone like that quite often. Um, awake in the middle of the night, just sitting in the dark. And sometimes this would go on for weeks before a deployment and after a deployment. Um, there was a lot of uh, fighting and screaming and stuff that went on um, during these times too, which was awful. It was absolutely terrible for both of us. I left him a couple of times. Um, we actually got divorced twice. Um, I dated other people. Uh, that didn't work out too well either because um, I, I loved him. I've loved him since I was 17 and I didn't want to be away from him no matter how broken he was. I, um, I wanted to keep him alive and I felt like if I wasn't there to watch over him that he wouldn't be here and I couldn't fathom that thought at all. So I also avoided my own family. For 20 years, I didn't speak to my own family, partially out of shame. Um, I was ashamed of the life I was living. Um, I didn't want them to know that I lived with an alcoholic who abused me. They knew it anyway. They met him. They knew. Um, but I was still ashamed, and I played the blame game and blamed everyone else, and no, my life is just fine. Um, it, it really wasn't, I can't say that it was awful all the time. Um, the boys had a great childhood. I made good friends. They had good friends. They ran in the neighborhood and played with others. And um, they made a lot of good friends, I think, at um, different places we were at. Um, our youngest son, uh, I think he caught the brunt end of uh, the fighting. And he never got to have an actual bond with his father. Um, by the time he was old enough to walk and talk, he was very, very intoxicated and started his deployments. Um, so, out of the 18 years, Damien left at 17, but out of the 18 years that Ron was at home and Damien was at home, Ron was gone a total of nine years of that. And that's just deployments and uh, I guess another duty station, Korea, would be one of those two, but still another year. One of his deployments was 18 months long. Um, you can't really get to know your 15, 12, sorry. 15, 12. It was 15 months, sorry, I thought it was, it was 18. 12, 15, 12. <laughs> I mean, you can't really get yeah. to know your children as they're becoming young adults during that either. Um, really, by the time of his last deployment, I um, had had my daughter. And um, he was gone the whole, almost the whole first year of her life. So she didn't really, she doesn't remember and didn't get to experience the, um, any of that stuff. Um, thankfully. Yeah, thankfully she's not had to deal with those types of things. But um, I kept pushing through, pushing through. Um, the boys really didn't get to know their dad. And at the end of his career, he was a drunk lump. He didn't act crazy. He didn't do anything silly. He just sat on the chair and drank every night. That's all he did. He was a drunk lump. He played video games. He stared at the programming. Um, I had uh, back spine problems um, and listened to the doctors. And I was on medications that turned me into a zombie, I guess. Um, gabapentin. Um, I was on uh, morphine patches. I was on um, narcotics and then anti-nausea medication because the narcotics made me sick. Um, I felt like I couldn't walk. I got to a point where I, I laid in bed um, all the time. My thyroid started to be dysfunctional from the, the neurontins and all kinds of things that I was taking. Um, the nerve burning? The, yeah, I, I went through four or five nerve burning surgeries in my spine to burn away the nerves from um, the area that was affected by the degenerative disc disease. Um, K2 
cannabis cures that, by the way. Um, I can do a back bend now. Um, I'm physically fit, and I don't have any back pain. I get sore from time to time, but I don't have Stop. severe back pain. And I don't take any medications whatsoever for that. Um, his drinking actually caused medical issues uh, for him. He lost the lining of his stomach, esophagus, intestines completely gone. The lining was completely gone. He was on medications. He, they said he would be on for the rest of his life. He didn't care. He kept drinking. Broke my heart. It was uh, horrible to watch. Um, I probably said to him over and over again, I can't watch you kill yourself. And that's actually what he was doing. Um, he kept saying to me that when he finally was done with the military that he would quit drinking. Um, he said he couldn't wait till the day that maybe he could smoke weed. <coughs> Funny. Because I had no because, depth. Himself. Yeah, he had no depth to himself. And um, really it was just a, oh, well, if I can just get high. He still uh, was thinking at the time that he just wanted an escape from reality because he really didn't know who he was. We know that now. Mm -hmm. I didn't then. I was just like this yeah. man. He was just annoying quite often to me, honestly. <laughs> Uh, but I love him, and he's always been very good to me, too, at the same time. So, um, there's nobody that's had... Well, not always, always meant to, but... I saw the intention. I saw a goodness that a lot of people could not see. Um, but, yeah, we both, we both had our faults. It's been a journey, right. that's for sure. So, from Fort... At Fort Stewart, we went to El Paso. That's where my daughter was born. And then we went to Fort Benning, Georgia, which is where the boys uh, basically went to high school. Um, and then left home from there. And his retirement was set to begin. And he was the drunken lump. Well, they lost his retirement packet quite a few times. It got misplaced somehow six different times. And a year and a half after he should have been retired, he was actually on the verge of a severe nervous breakdown. And he actually had it. That's why I kept me there. Yeah. That's another story. Go ahead. Yeah. That's, it was all done intentionally. We know this for a fact. Well, we ended up in Michigan. Um, luckily, an old army buddy had um, an opportunity for us and um, a home and some acreage and... Um, I felt in my heart I never wanted to come back to Michigan because I didn't like the snow, but I felt in my heart that if he was in Michigan, um, because I was on the way out the door, the retirement was the last straw, and he wasn't changing. No, he was getting worse. Way, yeah, he was getting worse. It was the worst I've ever seen him. And um, not being abusive to any of us, just um, acting very frantic, paranoid, very psychotic. It was... Um, it was crazy. And uh, so I knew that the only way to help, I took the opportunity in Michigan. Yes, let's go do this. I felt like if he goes home to um, where his mother is, where he grew up, um, maybe that will help him heal. I didn't know the craziness was about to come because we came to Michigan. And I want to say within a few months, he was still drinking a little bit. But once he stopped drinking and he stopped all of his medications at one time, everything, the antipsychotics, which that's kind of scary anyway, because you you send your brain into like a chemical, what the hell? Um, so no alcohol after being an alcoholic for 20 years. And um, then he started, We he got his medical cannabis card, which you are allowed to do in the state of Michigan, even with the VA, um, as long as it's prescribed to you. And he actually, in my opinion, was overusing. He was, it was just all day, every day, kind of like he was with the alcohol. But he was um, going a little crazy. He, uh, in my opinion, he, he, he was talking so fast. He was going through his, um, his spiritual awakening, changing. Um, I don't know how you want to call it, but he basically had found God and, I'd say it's that, a combination yeah. of that and the mind control crumbling, so to Starting speak, to or programming. No joke. I'll just put it that simply. Yeah. So, so, uh, so basically, he was going 
in my opinion, what I saw physically was him going crazy. He would stay up um, yeah, but, uh, 24 hours at a time, that was a mess. sometimes three or four days. And he was in my face talking constantly. It was the most annoying thing. And he was talking about all these deep, deep things, you know, um, researching things. And um, I had tried to get him to look at um, the flat earth and... Um, I've always been into aliens, giants, all kinds of things. I was the one in the household who got laughed at because I would come out and be like, oh my gosh, everybody's watching us. The government's doing this and this and this. And um, I kind of got laughed at and um, I kept it to myself, I guess. But I did. I was really into those things and um, was fascinated by them. And I knew that there was a reality somewhere behind that, that there was a truths being hidden from all of us um like i've always known that since i was in high school um i i was yeah i had an incident with my father over a jfk paper that i wrote and a teacher that was telling us to figure it out on our own kind of letting us use our own minds um wonderful teacher by the way i thought it was an amazing um experience to have as a young person and it's what opened my mind to start um using my own brain to hey you know i don't care what story they're telling that's not how it looks to me that's that's not right so i've always kind of been a little bit on that side um granted i got completely duped by all the medical stuff and with my children i was so scared every time they got sick i went right to a doctor and i followed every single doctor's order um to the t um, a fever went to the doctor things that should be cured naturally at home um, I, I took my kids to the doctor to get a prescription every single time it's horrible to think of the amount of toxic toxins um, I allowed to go into my children's body we did yes yeah he never even went to the hospital no I didn't <laughs> yeah um, so that's how we got here. Um, once he started going through his changes, um, I actually got freaked out because I have a young daughter and I, I left for a couple weeks cause he just was freaking out. And, um, I ended up coming back actually not, not for the right reasons, but kind of, I guess, um, I came back cause I was mad because I was like, um, no, you gave me 20 years of shit, and now you're going to be this amazing person who's found God? Heck no. Um, I get this part, too. Like, if I had to deal with all the bad, I want. Um, I want the happily ever after type stuff, too. Um, so I figured I'd come tough it out, whatever was going on. At least I knew some of the things that he'd been looking into were, even though I didn't understand all of them, he was actually going through the legal stuff. And straw man, all this crazy stuff. I didn't understand anything he was saying. Um, nor had I ever looked at it. And actually, while he was going crazy and telling me all these things I needed to look up, I just kept saying, shut up, shut up, shut up. Leave me alone, leave me alone. Just shut up. But um, I was looking. I was actually looking at everything he was talking about. And um, some of the things I was just like, man, I told you that like 10 years ago. And you didn't listen to me. And so there was a lot of fighting and frustration back and forth because he would he would actually get so emotional that he would cry over images at the tv and um the earth the sun the moon flowers i mean and he would just sit there and cry and i would look at him like are you freaking kidding me like you made me cry for 20 years i don't feel sorry for you like i have no i don't care like it really didn't affect me all this emotion that was happening to him because um He'd done it before, too. Said he was going to quit drinking. He would cry and tell me he loved me. And that's how I always came back. Yeah, I meant um, it. I meant it. I just couldn't do it. Yeah, I just didn't have the uh, strength to actually do it. So I really I, I really wondered, was it um, was genuine. it real? Was he being genuine? Yeah. Uh, was this just some kind of show? Was the was the cannabis making him act this way? I, I even called him a pothead quite a few times. Um, I didn't understand the actual medical benefits Um that cannabis has as oil as oil as an actual medication that 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 cures just about everything um i didn't understand that <coughs> so
So at one point on his journey, he decided um, he was going to eat nuts and seeds and just kind of stretch around the house. And I would just sit here and just watch him. Just completely annoyed. I, I don't even know why. Um, it was annoying. And um, all I've known is a wife and a mother. Both my, my boys are gone now. And I just have my daughter. And um, he just walks around the house eating nuts and seeds and stretching. And won't watch a TV show. It's programming all of it. You can't do this. You can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. I felt completely overwhelmed. Like, so I'm just supposed to sit here and watch you eat nuts and seeds and stretch all day long. I was super annoyed. I actually spent a couple months in bed because I started, then something started changing in me and I got super depressed to the point where I was saying I didn't want to be here anymore. It was, it was crazy. The, the, the amount of change. And I don't know how I came out of it. He came out of it. He just kind of started leaving me alone. And I slept for quite a bit. And then um, he started wanting to do things that he had never, ever wanted to do before. Because he was so antisocial. Like, let's go on a walk. Let's go on a hike. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. And I was like, wow, what? You're taking me to dinner? You're, you're doing this? We're going to do this? We're ice skating. All these fun things. Um, this was before we realized anything really serious about diet and um, stuff. So we were going, let's check out all these little hole-in-the-wall restaurants. Let's go hiking. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. We really were enjoying ourselves. Um, he still, for the most part, was nuts and seeds. And um, we found a health food store. And um, he, like, nutrition bars. And he started just really wanting to get healthy, you could tell. Um the cannabis was doing something. He kept trying to convince me to use it. And I just, mm, no. When I was a teenager, I did that. And um, my friends always made fun of me because it, it made me sleep. My friends always giggled because I was the one on the couch drooling on myself. Um, so I was really nervous to use it at all. Um, but still, over the years, I've never been a sleeper. I'll stay up all night long. I only get a couple hours of sleep. But I was completely unhealthy. I had an addiction to soda and then sugar poured in my coffee after I finally got off the soda. Uh, transitioning diet was really hard for me. Um, he stopped eating meat, actually, and I was mad. Like, oh, you're doing this. This is going to be your way to get on my nerves now because I love cooking for you. And that's the only thing I'm good at is I make these big meals and make everybody happy. And now I can't make anything for you. The blame game was crazy. I just, you're doing this on purpose, all this stuff. Um, but <laughs> I was, but not for the reason you thought. This is a good no, I know. I thought it was very intentionally just to, to have something right. to piss me off. Yeah. You know, like you're just trying to make me mad. So fine then, I guess I won't cook for you, but I'm going to sit over here and eat this steak and potato and you can sit over there and eat your nuts and seeds. I was that, um, like angry about it. Like very I was really angry like I would slam pots around there were there was some fighting and and not so nice words said to each other there was some dishes broken it was, it was mostly one-sided fighting because I was by that point I was well past the fighting that's why I wasn't eating meat and that's why I was crying when I was eating things so I was well past that point she was fighting and I kept trying to just let her do it and just hope she could work through it because I knew no matter what I did, she was going to take it as an attack on her. Yeah. No matter what I said to try and it convince was. her otherwise. No, this is for me because of something in me that I'm doing. And it's it's not like that. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> no, I knew she was going to see it the other way because it was that inversion of perception. So, and all that other trauma and paying me back and all these other things. So, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah right. it definitely, definitely got paid back during that short period of time because I was mad all the time. Like, uh, fine, I just won't cook for you Good then. Night. And it was it was terrible. Well, you know, I, I started watching him. And here he is lifting weights. And he's got a six-pack. And here I am, this big fat lump on the couch that keeps pouring sugar in my coffee. Okay, I'm going to give up soda. Oh, I'm okay, I'm going to do the vegetarian thing. Yeah, I got into that. I really did. But good Lord, help me. I was shoveling um, just bowls and bowls full of ice cream and cottage cheese and 
egg fried egg sandwiches. Holy cow. I mean, it was ridiculous. So I went, I, uh, I went crazy hardcore into the vegetarian thing, but basically ate only dairy. Um, so I, more like that weaponized vegan term, I guess, than vegetarian or plant-based. Those terms are weaponized. No, vegetarian means you eat dairy and eggs. Still. Okay, got That's see why. stupid terms. That's See, why I say plant based. Those terms, I actually. Yeah, know. I broke the sorcery, so I don't fall for the labels anymore because they're too twisted. I keep it simple. Sorry, go ahead. They are, but sometimes we got to use them to make other people understand what the heck you. we're talking about. So, yeah, I was eating the dairy and stuff. Then, actually, a friend of mine um, was talking to me. We were discussing health, and this is actually a friend of mine who tried to convince me several times that I needed to eat organic. Um, she tried every fad diet that you can think of, juicing and all these things. And um, we had tried some things in the past, and, and it just uh, never worked. Um, I couldn't get the family to... You can't get someone who drinks beer and eats pork rinds and stuff to um, join you on a health mission. That's for sure. But... Um, so she told me to watch uh, a documentary called Forks Over Knives. Now I'm not saying every single thing in that documentary is correct or accurate. There's a lot of really good evidence um, and a 20 year study that, that uh, very definitively proves that uh, meat and dairy um, in humans and in mice um, causes disease very definitively um, over a 20 year period with these individuals study. Um, and as soon as I saw that, we had just gone shopping, and I was super excited. I had blocks and blocks of cheese and cottage cheese and milk, and um, this is when I started really doing some research at night on my own. I was staying up later and really just hardcore digging into everything, mostly the health stuff. Um, and when I saw that documentary, um, he woke up the next morning, and I told him, I said, I watched this. And we have to talk. I want you to watch this. And he was like, I don't even need to watch it. I'm on board no matter whatever it is you say. Which was good that he had already gone through most things. Because I was like, okay. Um, we can't eat dairy anymore either. We need to be 100% plant based. And he was like, I'm down. Uh, that's cool. I want to do it. But this transition was very hard. At first I was like, um, well, we'll just eat up the stuff that's in the fridge. But after watching that, um, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I could not eat those blocks of cheese. Um, I couldn't crack the eggs for my chickens anymore. They were my chickens. I fed them. I watched them eat their own eggs. But something just grossed me out about it. Um, I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, some things we still had um, in the cabinets that it said it had a small amount of egg in it. And according to the documentary, as long as you um, kept dairy products and even meat, um, only about 2% of your diet, it didn't cause health effects. So that was kind of my excuse at first. Well, as long as it's a little bit and it's not the majority of our diet, we can use up the things that we have. And, and we did some, some items we did. This transition was very hard for my, my daughter. Um, this is a child that's been eating Pop-Tarts and, um, you know, all things, poison. poison, but things that children enjoy snacking on, you know, and <laughs> it, it was a different transition for her too. Um, she used to eat burritos and all cut just, oh gosh, this crap I fed her. But she also enjoys fresh vegetables and fruits and since she was a baby she has had an issue with meat she refused to eat it for the most part um she got the swine flu when she was about 15 months old and she was hospitalized she couldn't keep anything down this flu hit her right after she had had a big giant pot of beef stew that i made homemade i don't know if it was something in her mind but ever since then, she would never eat a piece of meat that looked like where you could see that it was flesh. Um, she, I did um, entice her to eat chicken nuggets and these burritos that had some hamburger in them. But she was not a meat eater. She would actually walk through the kitchen gagging 
every night while I cooked dinner or she would hide in her room because um, she just knew. I think children just know. Um, when I walk past the meat section in the grocery store now, I, I say I smell dead people because um, that's what it smells like. It's pretty gross. Um, all of our health problems started to disappear once we went plant-based. And I actually started using cannabis. He finally convinced me. Um, I had an injury at a job where, I don't know, a couple hundred pounds of dog food came off of a um, conveyor belt and slammed me into the pavement. So um, I was in a lot of pain, and that's when he convinced me to use the cannabis. He makes the oil, which is internal, which is totally different from smoking cannabis to get high. Um, it is more of like a body relaxation, and it makes me sleep better than... I've ever slept in my entire life. I sleep every night. I get up at 6 in the morning and I feel like I'm 20 years old. It's amazing. Um, so we have um, a healthy diet. Um, all of my daughter's medical conditions have gone away. She was born premature. She had eczema. They said she had a weakened immune system. All of these things. Ron had um, cancerous polyps removed. Um, so colon cancer stuff heart disease, um, anxiety, all just all kinds of things. I had hyperthyroidism. I can, there's just a long list. If I really dug out medical records, it would probably amaze people, the, the list of medical conditions, but all of which are completely gone. Regeneration of bone, re, what did it say? Uh, regeneration of bone, nerves. My, my brain, last MRI shows. Tissues. Uh, yeah, that I am gaining height in my L4, L5, which supposedly in the medical community is impossible. And that is because of cannabis. My, and my, the diet and probably and the a diet. combination. Yeah, a combination. But especially that, that, that oil was good. Yeah, yeah. So basically we, um, we've changed our diet. We, um. We have not had cable TV in five years. We live kind of out in the woods. Um, my daughter is able to, she's homeschooled. She's able to run outside um, any time of the day that she wants to. I don't have to worry about um, people snatching her up. Now that she's not breathing in chemtrails and um, there's bears and, and things out here, but um, I feel um, grateful to know that uh, we have a different lifestyle now. Um, I'm grateful that we're healthy and mentally, spiritually, um, this has just been amazing. I don't, I don't even know what else to add really. If there's stuff I've missed, we kind of, we just want for others to be able to experience that. And, and that can only happen by coming to know these things that have happened to all of us. And I say that cause yeah, she just said grateful for this. And like I had said the same thing. I'm grateful to you for having, having been given a chance to live a whole different life than I had lived. A full life that I didn't realize was missing. Yeah. But, but, yeah, because it's not about me or it's not about us. And we're doing this because we want others to experience it too. And that can only happen if, if really there's really mass awareness gained out there into what's really going on. What has happened is happening and what's coming yeah. because it, it's not good. So that's why we're saying it. So it's not to, to say, oh yeah, yeah, everything's so great for us and life is great. Cause no, right outside right now, there's, well, oh, there's tons of chemicals that have dumped this chemical snow. That's very, <laughs> very, very, very treacherous for anyone that knows how it is to drive on snow and ice. You should know by now, I would hope that this is not regular snow and ice the way it instantly sticks and freezes like it does. It's so unnatural and there's so many things folk need to look into. So that's really why why we're sharing. Hopefully sharing in such a way as, I mean, maybe can, it really so others can learn from our yeah. mistakes really to try and catch up as fast as they can. So maybe things can change. Well, I was thinking too that maybe somebody, uh, if 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 people watching maybe have been through some of the things that we've been through, um, most couples that have 
um, uh, alcoholism, abuse, um, military families, all these crazy things that have gone on, they normally don't end up together or the, the cycles of what they're doing just continue repeatedly over and over and over again. Um, and, and, um, I'm hoping that it will help someone, um, either realize that it's time to, to get out of a situation like that or to do what you can together to fix it because it is fixable. You just have to, um, really learn how to speak to one another. And really, if you, if you don't get healthy, it's almost like if you're, toxic on the inside that's what shows on the outside um, I definitely did not know how to talk to others and when I would get my feelings hurt I instantly lashed out at everyone um, the F you and blah 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 you're a butthole and it was pointing the finger at everyone else while spewing horrible crap out of my own mouth like how can I expect someone to treat me with any dignity or respect if I'm just swearing at them, um, I had some abuse growing up and, uh, in order not to be an abusive person, I thought, Oh, I'll just, I'll just scream and swear. I'll just scream and swear. And uh, that's how I'm not being abusive. Holy cow. Um, I was not a very nice person every time I got my feelings hurt, even by my, um, my boys when they were younger, older, and they would laugh at me. I, I, I would say some hurtful things to them, just yell it at them. They, they would hurt my feelings, and then I would react like a child right back at them. Um, I definitely had them way too young, and I didn't um, raise them uh, the best that I could have, but I did with the best that I knew how. And I think now that they're older, they understand that. We've had the opportunity to actually... Um, um, show Persons them, things, yeah, things. express all of this to them. Um, everything that, that, uh, we know that we did wrong. Hey, we did this wrong. Um, this isn't right. This is how you should eat. This is how you should talk to each other. This is how you help one another. Um, hopefully we've given them everything we can now. And they know that all the mistakes that we made, um, we did not do intentionally. And, um, we tried to make it right and give them, all the best knowledge that we could now. Um, we're definitely not a perfect family. We have our issues like anyone else. Um, I still have days where I get irritated. Uh, everybody just leave me alone. I'm going to sit in the bedroom and watch TV. Not often. It's not often. I don't remember the last time. That I sat in the room and watched TV. Yeah, it's, it's months. It is I maybe twice a year. I probably sit in the room all day long and watch some dumb show like <laughs> I I prefer to watch uh, older things uh, we watch Little House on the Prairie and things like that it's all still programming you can see it it's kind of funny when you're aware of all these things going on how you can kind of giggle at it but no, it's not funny no it's really not it's not funny it is sorcery it is I'm not joking yeah. it's not funny not, not to con contradict you but that is a and actually, that's something I was writing about. It's contradiction. And I realized, yeah, that was a state I lived in in my mind. is a state of contradiction. Contradictory belief held in my mind. That's one of them. Little House on the Prairie is a good example. I watched that when I was young. My mother liked that show. I liked that show when I was young. So, watching it here and now, yeah, it's supposed to, you know, it has that nostalgic effect. But still, it's contradictory for me to sit there and go, yes, I can sit here and enjoy this knowing full well it's sorcery that all of it from the networks was and why is it sorcery because it's such a wholesome show no it's for the things you can't see it's for the things you can't hear or the things you are seeing and hearing that you can't discern with your physical senses but you can feel it physically inside and the mind is perceiving it and it's pumping those false images in not to go on a whole long rant about that i've talked about that kind of stuff before but yeah it's for real that's why we don't well I, I don't still, watch that I stuff like that. I enjoy watching TV. She, and, I got to hear that right. every time I do, but. Eh, not every time, but sometimes. But yeah. it doesn't happen often. So. No, it doesn't. It doesn't happen often. There At are first, during that process of transition, though, like when she was still watching things, and I wouldn't, that was one of those, like she said, points of contention there, because that was something we used to do. 
sit and stare at the television yeah. set together. And and yeah, when I stopped doing it, she'd get angry at me, and but I just couldn't do it. I well, couldn't I do it because watch, it was um, physically and mentally painful at one point for me to where I realized, oh, oh, this what this is and what this stuff is doing, and yeah. Oh well, the the, the the things that I enjoyed watching too were absolutely terrible. Um, me so too. That's, I, that was I, a problem. Yeah, he watched crazy stuff. dark stuff, and like, so did I. In, in a way, but it was tr true stories. So I watched those um, what, murder mystery ID channel type fear things. Fear programming. Fear programming, and that's exactly what it did to me. I, I thought every neighbor may have a secret wish to kill somebody. I thought everybody out there was. I was. I was scared of people. I avoided people. I acted defensively towards anyone that even looked at me funny. Um, and I watched those faithfully. Like, I, who the bleep did I marry? Stories about people marrying people that turned out to be other people or people that turned out to be murderers. The neighbors ended up being murderers. And I was like, I would say to him all the time, so if they can run these murder shows 24 hours a day, that means people are out murdering 24 hours a day. Like, and I would, I would sit there and go through these things in my mind. And I was, I was scared all the time. Um, my middle son, I never even let him have a sleepover until he was 12. I didn't let him go anywhere. I was so overprotective of them that I may have held them back from some things. And it was because of that programming. I was being programmed to keep my children prisoner because I was so scared of everything. Um, and I still have, it's, I'm paranoid for different reasons now, of course, because the public, the, the food, the, um, now those things you know in your heart. Human trafficking. Yeah. I mean, these things are really going yeah. on. And, um, I have a daughter now, the, the last one of our children at home. And, um, those things are scary to me. I have I have made a big difference. Um, I think with her, uh, I I try to be a, um, not as paranoid and scared <laughs> over things. I wouldn't even let the boys cook. So my poor uh, children uh, learned how to cook in a microwave because um, they were so hyperactive and so disconnected all the time. Um, they just walk in the room and punch each other for no reason, and I just. Um, if you aren't smart enough to not punch your brother in the face, then you definitely aren't turning on the stove. That's kind of how I looked at it. Um, <laughs> that's sad, though, that I didn't stop them from that behavior. I just didn't teach them something else because of it. Um, because I was disconnected also. Otherwise, I would have corrected their behavior and um, engaged with them and taught them how to prepare meals and things. And um, I'm grateful that I got the chance to... <laughs> Um, show my oldest son and and Damon was here for a while I got to show them how to actually cook and prepare some meals the right way without a microwave because those things are dangerous and they um, emit radiation even when not in use just plugged in so um, that's not good consuming anything that's a uh, irradiated is not good yeah because every bit of nutrients that would have been even in broccoli or anything like that has been radiated so um it it doesn't even taste the same <laughs> um thinking about it now but um and thinking back on how many times my children stood in front of the microwave counting down 10 9 8 and and they were getting irradiated right in their face and in their head and i wondered why uh they walked in the room and punched each other well it's because they were being irradiated they'd been vaccinated um i had them full of pharmace pharmaceuticals um and in in front of a video game 24 hours a day uh i thought that if they played video games then i wouldn't have to worry about girls or them doing things younger than they should be doing them when in reality they were probably learning awful things on video games um and the people that were on there talking with them also Definitely. so to add another and i i started with that one early when i was young i've talked about that before and yep that's another that's a heck of a form of sorcery there too that that you can interact with interactively while you sit there and play and consume whatever's on the screen and it's it's a powerful desensitization, mm -hmm. desensitization tool for 
violence and to take part in violence and imaginary violence, but still, that's the point. They want you to constantly see and imagine violence and to take part virtually or digitally all you want because eventually that violence spills out into the physical and that's what we're seeing happen now. Yeah. With all the toxins folks are full of, with all these frequencies at the at the at the level they're being propagated right now to destroy the public's consciousness and sleep suckers. I, I mean, it, it it's bad. It's bad. And folk gotta get themselves <laughs> cleaned out and really stop cut off from the programming and that those images that will keep replaying in the mind until you can get them out. Which it's important. Get those images out and get some images, real imagery in the mind of nature. And what's going on in nature is it's being destroyed. And then maybe some imagery of your own nature and what your nature is and what you're made of. Because it's not these names, labels, titles, people, person, human, like a human of what hue. That would bring human, hue, H-U-E, hue brings color to mind. Color. Well, it's not about a color because this isn't a race. It's about mankind, womankind. It's about our species, knowing that we're more than what we were taught. So, yeah, I don't want to go too far. Sorry. I want to put that in about the sorcery. And then I just... Oh, yeah. There's all kinds of things going on, which I'm sure that we will have. Um, I'm hoping we can um, openly discuss together. Maybe people can see how we discuss some of these things. Um, yeah. uh, we watch... Uh, folks on YouTube, we actually have learned a lot from other people's channels, and um, yes, and thank, thank you, you folks for that. Yes, who we... are doing this work <coughs> and have been for far longer than I knew it was going on. Thank you. <coughs> yes, um, uh, we've we've learned a lot um, uh, from others' research. Uh, of course, we've done a lot of digging on our own, and um, and yes. and check and verify, and 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 maybe even. Um, look at some things uh, from our own perspective because sometimes you need your own perspective on some of these things. Always. Um, you're not always going to see it the same as others, but uh, learning from them has has been uh, beneficial to us for sure. Um, we're hoping that our channel and us discussing some of these topics can maybe help people who are transitioning, uh, learning some of these things, just finding out, and they have a significant other that... Uh, they maybe want to talk to because it's hard uh, to go th through it alone. And we kind of did it separately, but in the same house. And boy, was it not fun. Um, he was going through it. Then I was going through it. It was kind of this back and forth for a little while of um, just not getting along. And th there was points where I I'm leaving. I'm never coming back. You're too annoying or... I can't handle this, and and really, if 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 there's if there's genuine love there, there's there's no reason to give up on someone. It's it it's well worth the struggle to have your partner by your side. Um, I want to make that very clear. As hard as the struggle can get, even when you're not getting along or not seeing things eye to eye, um, it is worth it is worth it. It is even if you spend countless hours in separate rooms, which we did. Um, months, months, months we spent like that. Um, it's still worth it because even in separate rooms, you're, you're going in deep. You're reflecting on all of your feelings, even, even the anger towards the other person at moments or, um, love or just whatever you're going through. You, you still have to reflect on it inside yourself, even if you're spending more time apart. But I think it's worth it to when you come out of whatever, Darkness, you come out of to have them right there with you to discuss all of these things and go through it together. Maybe depend on the situations. Yeah, I guess it does depend on, on every couple. But I'm hoping we can help someone. Maybe even listening to us talk will help yeah, I know someone a lot of figure out through. a way. Yeah. yeah, A lot of others are on the same bumpy road right now of trying to get through to each other, figuring out how or their family. And yeah, maybe this can give an example of yeah, a couple that's been through that real, real bumpy part, and we're yeah. on this side of it. So maybe this can, you know, maybe this can yeah. serve as some kind of help we, for someone. We do have to remember that all these things that are coming to light are meant to divide us, divide us as families, as couples. Um, from within ourselves first. Yeah. And, yeah, and then from everyone around. And I think we just can't 
let that divide us. Um, I think that we have to stick together and do do for one another. Um, that's that's hopefully what we're doing with these videos is trying to um, just have open discussions and um, and let people uh, join in on it if they if they want. Uh, maybe this video will help someone talk out what they've been through because uh, revisiting uh, the things that we've been through, even times when we've hurt each other the most, we've spent countless nights crying together. Um, and that was important. It was very important. Some of the most important. To actually openly admit, I did you so wrong at this point when this and this happened. I was wrong and From I'm sorry. From a place of feeling it and knowing yes, it and, and just expressing it. That is so profoundly yes. healing, though it's so hard to do. Yeah. But, the, yeah, <laughs> it's important. It really yeah. is. It's very important. We've cried about the, the, the children being vaccinated. We've cried. All and kinds of things. We've giggled about some memories and, 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 and thought to ourselves, how, how were we so stupid? Like, how did, how did we make it here? We say that one quite often. Like, how were we even alive? Like, how, how did we make it here? How, um, how did, I don't, I don't know. It's been a ride. Now, the last few years have been um, the best for us as a, as a, as a couple. Um, for sure, we've we've never been as close as we are now. I didn't know myself before a few years ago, so yeah, and I couldn't. Yeah, that was part of it we talked about before. Yeah, in a row. But yeah, I agree. That's yeah. Want that for others. Mm. For each, because each that's the thing. Each inside can get to that place inside because it's not about a partner either. It's about you not needing a partner first. Yeah. And getting that place inside yourself to where you're so just content and secure in yourself and what you see and perceive and what you know and know that there is more and you're connected to much, much more. And once you feel that and know that, having a partner that's in that similar state, that's magical. It is. And it's from yeah. a place of the heart, not 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 the mind trying to use each other and feed off each other in a native way. It's, yeah, heart to heart, mind to mind, and it is, it's magical. But the magic has to start with the man or woman inside them fully come to know themselves and the much more of, much more, whatever they need to find to feel it. Because when you don't need words anymore, and it's that clear and coherent inside you that, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to go on after this physical body and you know it. And you know things are important while you're in this physical body to to pay attention and do them maybe and reflect on things. And you'll know it when you feel it, I'd say. And it's important to get there inside for each. And together. Yeah. And together. Yeah. 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 I guess, well, um, only other thing uh, I can say, I have been asked uh, by some crazy family members because we don't um, watch cable and all this stuff all the time. Like, well, what do you do all day? Mm. Um, well, um, we're in Michigan, so the winter kind of sucks. But um, I am very big into crafting. I craft, um, I bake, I cook, and most everything I make is from scratch. Um, I just made a um, plant-based spice cake tonight. It was absolutely delicious. I can't wait to eat some more of it. Um, I I love cooking. Um, Maybe videos on it. Huh? Maybe videos in the future on Oh, some yeah. Of I guess we'll probably be doing some more of these discussion videos. Oh, um, I mean on the cooking, too. Oh, Maybe. yeah. Maybe I should. I could do some of my plant-based recipes. Um, I've been really enjoying... Um, finding recipes, tweaking them to my own. There's a lot of um, textures and flavors some of us don't like, so I've had to learn how to work around that, and it's actually been fun. I feel like I've learned how to cook all over again. It's been pretty amazing. Um, when I went to visit my family, my dad taught me some pretty awesome stuff. Um, I have reconnected with my family, which has filled my soul. I can't even... I'll start crying if I talk about that too much but I'm so grateful to have my family back it's uh that one 
Ah, uh, that one gets me, but I'm very happy to have my family. Um, I do love crafting and I love cats. Um, the, the running joke can be I'm the crazy cat lady because I do have seven of them. <laughs> one of them just came back from the vet, uh, actually gave me a, a scare, uh, too much calcium type stuff in his diet. So he's got to be on a special diet. He had some kidney stones and stuff, um, but he's doing really good. And, um, yeah, I have seven cats. I'm not sure if you guys want to meet all of them, but, um, my cats, my dogs, um, I enjoy spending time with them. Um, people think that's kind of odd, but, um, my husband can tell you, I do definitely actually spend one-on-one -on -one time with each individual animal and pet them and talk to them every day. I have a routine. I get up and talk to them in the mornings. Um, uh, I love them, and I think they, I love that they love me unconditionally, which a lot of um, humans out there have forgotten how to do, so they are my friends. <laughs> mm. Ron has um, hobbies. I don't know. What are your hobbies? This. <laughs> this really has become my hobby. Like, ever since, yeah, I went through my phase of... It's a cat. Uh, I won't get into the whole thing, but really, after I went through that whole process of really growing up inside and looking at the world different, looking at myself differently after I went through all this and got to this place to where I finally felt like I was, I guess, I could truly call myself an adult that had found some, I don't know. Really my hobby has become this, to, to go deeper and deeper, best I could to make things clear, clear, more simple, more concise. Any little thing as I observed it or perceived it or felt it, just so I could put it to words and voice it to try and help others. And while at the same time, just kind of watching what's going on out there and taking in information wherever I can find it and really just, I don't know, like leaving comments around all over the place. So, yeah, some well, folks probably I... find my comments on their videos and, and like, who who the heck is this leaving a text wall on here? Well, yeah, it's just because I'm leaving just words, sharing thoughts and feelings around different places. Mm -hmm. And if it's, even if it's a place or a video that has really... I mean, it's nothing but the materialistic, narcissistic, or this, that, or the other. It doesn't matter, really, at this point to me. i just trying to share some words wherever I can, when I can, I guess, the best I can, while I can. And really, I have no other hobby than that. Like, that's enough to where I, I, don't, I don't really need a distraction. <laughs> because yeah, I guess there's so much going on. And in the meantime, in between time, it's just us talking and just, yeah. I don't know, just living life moment to moment. I think for the last couple of years, too, you kind of um, spent a lot of focus on um, helping to educate the, the boys, our boys, with this information. Tried, yeah, um, tried, tried, tried to do that, with yeah. One, but one yeah. of them um, was here for a while and actually, I think, took in um, a lot. And he's doing his own thing and um, he's making music and putting out. Um, videos of his own and he is doing an amazing job and um, has a son now and uh, the other one I think he took some of it in I'm not sure if he's taken it to heart yet but um, I, I think he's I think he's at least trying um, we're, we're hopeful for him and um, I think uh, I think everything's going to work out um, I really I just have uh, faith in that and that um, we've done the right thing by giving them both the information that we could to um, Trying to correct the damage to really. correct the damage that we've caused yeah. and um, uh, He's done a really good job trying to express to them that um, You know he he did wrong and and was gone a lot uh, for their childhood and, and give them uh, the best fatherly advice that he could now so um that's that's how it's gone with the boys. They're grown and uh, on their own now. And um, we just have uh, one here. Um, 
She's 11. I think I said 10 in the last video. She got upset. She's 11. <laughs> she just turned 11. So um, that's important. Yeah. That whole thing. Yeah. From conception, that whole birth. I won't go there. I won't keep it. <laughs> That'd be I another think we're video. Wrapping it up, aren't we? Yep. I think I think this should be this should be pretty good for an introduction video. Um, if anybody has any questions, I guess they can just uh, leave it in the comments. Um, maybe we can premiere this one and I can sit in the chat again, or um, however, in case anyone has any questions, I can be there to answer some. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. All right then. Well, I appreciate anyone's kind attention that sat through this long or any at all. Which, if you're already gone, you won't hear this. But we appreciate you. Thanks for listening. Feel free to share. Do whatever you might like with it. Thank you. All right.